Hi everybody, I am MG Betcher and this is the Richard Nixon Library Museum in beautiful Yorba Linda, California. And I am going to take us on a tour. We're going to see what's inside. That's from my point of view. That's better. All right, so we're going to have to make this a very fast tour. I really wanted to show more of this, but there's just too much to be seen. So this is the Richard Nixon Presidential Library Museum in Yorba Linda. Now, they originally were wanting to put it at La Casa Pacifica, which is in San Clemente. That was President Nixon's uh, California home. But... Um, his birthplace went out, and I think that's very, very cool. So you go in and they show you a movie, and then you are off and into the museum itself. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a model of La Casa Pacifica that's in San Clemente. I uh, should have should have kept that one, sucker, because that one is worth a lot of money now. Anyway, uh, they immediately go into the 1960s. Uh, and that was a really rough decade. I'm glad I wasn't there because that was a whole lot of mess. And when he uh, took office, they show a little bit of his inaugural uh, speech there in 1969. And then they go directly into the replica of the um, Oval Office. And they show everything. as They have it as close as they could get it to the way he had it with the navy blue rug and the golden rod. How, you know, how 1970s is that? Um, they have, uh, there's a picture of, um, it's called Earthrise. And let's see, it should be up here in just a second. It's very cool. It is the first picture of the Earth that they had, I guess, from Apollo, I think it was 11, not sure. Um, there it is. And uh, let's see, then in the Oval Office, this one, I believe, is uh, they have a replica of the Wilson desk. Now, uh, Nixon chose, there's only been six desks that have been used in the Oval. Uh, well, uh, Nixon chose the Wilson desk because he admired President Wilson, but joke's on him, Wilson never used this desk. Um, as a matter of fact, nobody named Wilson ever used this desk. So I, I don't even know why it's called the Wilson desk, but it is, and there it is. And so there's a few of his little things that he always kept in the desk. And then uh, this is a very cool oval because in some of them, they have actual pieces that the president used. And uh, if they have the actual, the actual uh, like couches and stuff or um, globes or whatever, you can't walk through because it's museum quality, but this is a replica. So they do allow everybody to go in and sit on the couches and lounge around if you want to. I walked in once and there was a man literally sprawled out on the couch. I have a picture of it, it's kind of funny. Anyway, so he, uh, I don't know about the birds. I don't know what the connection is to that. Um, sorry, I can't tell you. Um, then after the Oval Office um, display, which is, I love these Oval Office displays. It really gives you a really good idea of what he looked at every day. Anyhow, so they go into the Vietnam um, conflict. They, they do a very good display on it. I don't have time to explain it all. These are some of the letters and telegrams that the American people sent, either in support or not. You know, I mean, you have to read each one, but who has time for all that? Then uh, they have displays on his domestic policy, his foreign policy. I mean, and it is, yeah, they're going to get into the Watergate stuff, which is really unfair because there he did a lot that doesn't get acknowledged. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's the Apollo 11. Now, this is, this is stupid. But when I got here to this display, uh, I was reading these placards and I came across the one where it says moon rock and pork and scallop potato I did not expect to see that that is nasty <laughs> so I'm sure that people around me thought that I was spazzing out but I thought That's those were going to be the moon rocks God, anyway moon rock. anyway And then we get into the opening of China. He went in, he was, I mean, that was the equivalent of a moon landing to have an American president going into China. Um, and they've got a really great display on this. And then they have the Ryu Scepter 
um, which is incredible. Now these two pieces belong in the state gifts um, exhibit, but they because they were given to him at the China uh, trip is why they're shown here. Now here's the chunk of the Berlin Wall. Every presidential library that exists, with the possible exception of the Herbert Hoover, I don't remember anything about the Berlin Wall being at the Herbert Hoover, probably because he had probably nothing to do with the Berlin Wall. Um, but uh, if you'll notice on all of them, uh, there's a painted side and a blank side. The painted side is the west side and the blank side is the east side. And um, as I've seen a piece at every single one of the libraries. Now here's the uh, gifts of the heads of state. These are things that other leaders have given to the American people. Now the president accepts them on behalf of the American people, so they don't get to keep them. But they're some of the most ridiculous things. I mean, I love sparkle, so I mean, they had those and they've got the, I mean, one, one of them was a crown that they gave Eleanor Roosevelt. Can you possibly imagine? Anyway. So then we're going to zip on over to the First Lady's exhibit, and they have uh, a lot of her clothing that uh, she donated. Um, if you want to see some 1970s fashions, <laughs> head on over to the First Lady's exhibit at the Nixon Library, because there they are. Does that just not scream Holly Hobby? Now, some of these gowns are really beautiful, but in the if you go to one of my other videos at, about the First Ladies on the Nixon one, there'll be an in-depth uh, tour, because if you wanted to see the whole library, you can see every inch of this library. You just have to go to the full videos, not in these little truncated ones. I'm doing these just to try to get as much info as, as I can crammed into 10 minutes and impossible. Now that was actually the coat that she wore to China. So then they go to the 1972 campaign or to the election and that was a landslide. Then they go right into the road to resignation, which again, unfair, but they have to. In the original library, when it was originally done, I don't think they had much mention of Watergate because at that point it wasn't part of the NARA system. And so it was just the... Um, a presidential library as he had set it up so they've added more to it now the recordings so Roosevelt Truman Eisenhower Kennedy Johnson they all recorded just not to the extent that Nixon did so here's how Nixon recorded so he they show in detail at Camp David In the cat in Lincoln's sitting room, which is one of his favorite rooms. Oh, he wanted to hear everything that was said in there. Woof! My goodness! Don't fart in there; you'll be heard. And then in the uh, old executive he had in there as well and his other thing. Now here in this portion is when after his resignation and they're leaving. Now the reason it looks like this is because he left on Marine One as you see there. Now that actual Marine One is going to be seen later in the video and it's actually on the grounds of the Nixon Library. Super cool. But the reason they show them there is because when Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nixon when they left the White House so that's kind of them in profile sitting on Marine One. Now we're gonna go into massive flashbacks. And this, we're gonna end up in, th here is in the library. This is where they show all of the old family pictures and the history and everything else and didn't have time for that in this version, but it's all in the full video. Here's his uh, funeral and uh, all the uh, existing POTUSes that they had at the time went. And then um, now we're going to go outside and take a look at the grave site, which is when one of my favorite built, grave sites. Now, was, I'll, yeah, I think I did an audio here, so. And who would have thunk that back then, when he was out there farting around playing grab ass with his friends in the backyard, that one day this would be here?
right there is the uh, that's the East Room uh, replica and they use that for uh, special occasions like the wedding that's going on right now and uh, so I don't think I can go in there. I have some pictures from last time so if I can't get in there and it doesn't look like I can because they're just setting up so I got a really boogie 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 and that was the gazebo they used. Well, damn, I really wish I had more time to walk through the walk slow. And these are beautiful grounds. They're not a replica of the Rose Garden at the White House or anything, they're just really pretty. And you can see that it is literally steps away from the back door. And I just have to s just wonder. It's amazing that this house he was born in, it still stands. And he would play in these very, this very space as a little boy. And when he looked out those windows, when his mother looked out the windows to call him back in, she saw a very different scene than what is here today. I love that. So then we have Marine One, we have his boyhood home. Now this is absolutely amazing to me because between that boyhood home and that grave, man, he lived a life. And I believe 80% of what you see in this house is theirs. They were able to cobble it together over the years. And they always have somebody who would take you on a tour, and this lovely lady took us on a tour. And I gotta go, gotta, I gotta get out of here. Boogie, because they're setting up for a wedding. I can't imagine they won't be hanging around. So, we are off to the next one. You'll see you soon. Oh, the steering wheel's in the way. Thanks guys, bye.